How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for biochemistry. Seven-year-old girl, she has diabetic ketoacidosis. So she's school age. She had a recent upper respiratory tract viral infection, usually Coxsackie B virus. Now you have polyuria, polydipsia, and you can have vomiting as well. So we have DKA, and we're asking you which combination of findings in terms of these enzymes and polyubiquitination are we going to have here? So past level, as I said, I made clips on this before. Let's just whip through. Polyubiquitination. So up or down. Now, ubiquitin is a molecule that we tag to proteins in the cytosol in order to send them to the proteasome for breakdown. So polyubiquitination is going to be increased in the fasting state. It's decreased in the fed state. So in diabetic ketoacidosis, we're going to be gluconeogenic. We're going to be catabolic. We're going to be breaking down proteins. We're going to have proteolysis because insulin is not present. And insulin, what does it normally do? It's normally going to stimulate not only glycolysis, but also protein synthesis, fatty acid synthesis. So if we don't have insulin here, we're going to be trying to break down proteins in order to use them as energy. It's a lengthy tangential seminar. The skeletal muscle cannot make glucose directly, but the skeletal muscle will liberate amino acids via polyubiquitination. So we have an up arrow uh, for starters. And then those amino acids are going to go to the liver where they in turn will be converted into glucose. Okay, so gluconeogenesis at that point. So we're looking at A through D so far. So glucokinase is the hexokinase variant in the liver. Now hexokinase, glucokinase, they're the first enzyme in glycolysis converting glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. So we have hexokinase everywhere. It's ubiquitous. Glucokinase in the liver has a greater KM, less affinity for glucose. It has a greater Vmax, greater saturation capacity for glucose. And this makes sense because if glucose levels are lower and insulin is lower, we wouldn't want the liver soaking up the glucose. We would prefer for glucose to be utilized at peripheral sites, skeletal muscle, adipose tissue. So that's why hexokinase has a lower KM, greater affinity for glucose compared to glucokinase, which has a higher KM. Likewise, when we have higher glucose in the blood and insulin goes up, we want glucokinase to be activated because now we want the liver to soak up that glucose and it has a higher saturation capacity. It can act as a buffer and convert the glucose into glycogen. Now in the setting of DKA, because insulin is deficient, we're going to have less activity of glucokinase because as we said, glucokinase is normally stimulated by insulin. So we're looking at choices C and D here, decreased glucokinase activity. Now, glycogen phosphorylase activity is going to be increased. Our correct answer is choice C. Glycogen phosphorylase is the enzyme that breaks down glucose. Glycogen synthase will build up glucose. So in the setting of DKA, where we're in the fasting state and insulin is low, glycogen phosphorylase will be increased because we want to break down glycogen to liberate glucose for energy. So our short summary, polyubiquitination is increased. We have breakdown of proteins. We have decreased glucokinase activity because insulin is low. And glycogen phosphorylase increased. We have breakdown of glycogen because we are in the fasting state.